our lips and then betray, deserted or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your Spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us and raised us from the dead, and, or raised, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory Amen. Let us uh, read, uh, pray together our prayer of illumination. Gracious and holy God, give us wisdom to recognize you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to see you, a heart to meditate upon you, a life to proclaim you, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the teachings of our Lord Christ. Amen. I invite you to turn in your red hymnals now to page 8. 37, and there you will find the 116th Psalm, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 4, and then if you'll turn the page over, 12 through 19. And I invite you to please stand as we read responsibly. I love the Lord, who has heard my voice and my supplications, and has inclined his ear to me whenever I call. The snares of death encompass me. The pains of shell lay hold on me. I suffer the stress and anguish. Then I call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all my benefits? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice and thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the course of the house of the Lord, Praise the Lord. May God add his blessings to the reading of his God's word. We now turn to our, uh, we sing our song of hope, number 616, Come Sinners to the Gospel of Peace. 616, under red.
Bibles, uh, read a few Bibles, 1673, and there you will find John 13. And we read the story as Jesus has entered Jerusalem and is now uh, having dinner with his uh, Passover dinner with his disciples. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave the, this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, you are not going to wash my feet. No, excuse me. Lord, you are going to wash my feet. And Jesus replied, Look, Jesus replied, you do not realize what you're asking, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, then Lord Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, the person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. And when he had finished washing, uh, finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to the place. Do you, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash your feet of one another. And I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than the master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do this. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of God's word and let us all say, Amen. Amen. How about you to be seated? I changed the title of my sermon tonight, the homily tonight, because I read something extraordinary. Here was a very ordinary meal with extraordinary grace performed the night before the disciples' lives. You know, as I read this story over and over again this week, I realized that Jesus is doing something that surprised them. And no, no more than Simon Peter, right? You're going to wash my feet? Why do we not like people to touch our feet? There's something intimate about people touching our feet that we cover them up, right? We don't want people to see our feet. Now, some people have nice feet and they paint their toenails and they wear open toed shoes and stuff like that. I'm not one of them. I've never painted my toenails. Thank you. But the idea behind it, the guy behind the whole thing is this idea that when people take off our shoes, and they touch our feet. There's something about that that is so intimate. Some of us are ticklish, and some of us just don't like people touching our feet. I went to a podiatrist, and he touched my feet. And it's the first time I believe somebody outside of my family actually touched my feet. And I didn't like it. I felt very uncomfortable the entire time I was in the chair. Yes, here the disciples are watching this person that they have 
watched for the last three years and watched all the things that he's done. How he's healed the lepers, healed the blind, how he's raised people from the dead. And here he is. The very God of the universe, because we have to remember that Jesus was not only fully human, he was fully divine. And if we go to the beginning of John and read the prologue to John, we understand that even better because the way in which John writes it, it tells us of the intimate relationship that Jesus has with the Father at the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through and with Him. How would you feel if the Creator of the universe, the Creator of everything that you have known all your life, knelt down before you? This is how precious we are to God. He would take on a servant's role to wash our sin away. But he knew that it wasn't just enough to wash our feet. He knew what he had to do and those plans had already been set in motion. That was the extraordinary grace we experienced. It was like no other time that they had been with him. Of course, they'd been through all the different times that they'd seen miracles and they'd been participating in miracles. It was nothing. For you see, within that meal of the Passover, there are specific prayers and specific words that are said over each of the cups. They have not been changed for thousands of years. Children from the age of five have memorized these words in the prayers and they know them by heart. And the disciples, too, knew them by heart. Even though they may not have never gone to rabbinical school or any upper education, because they went to the temple day in, day out, they knew these prayers, especially during Passover. But what they didn't expect was Jesus to change the prayer over the cup of Elijah. transform it into a moment in which God would show us what he was doing in that very moment for all human time, for all times, not just in that moment, but forever. I can't imagine having the creator of the universe I'm going to wash your feet. I think I would have been like Peter. Don't just wash my feet. Wash my hands. Wash my head. Wash all of them. And ultimately, 
speaking word. He would tonight, we remember his words. They become living words for us because just as he changed the prayer in the Passover meal, so it now changes us to experience the same extraordinary grace that he shared with them at table in that room that night. And that's my prayer for us in this Easter season, that we would have that change Transform us into a people that is forged in the love of Christ. That as we have experienced the extraordinary grace of God, we would go and share that grace with the world. That table that night, as he sat with his, his disciples, opened up to the world. That's why I had you sing Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast. That was one of Charles Wesley's songs. It's such a powerful song. And I think that one of the reasons that I chose it tonight was for See him set before your eyes. Behold the bleeding sacrifice. His offered love make haste to embrace. And freely now be saved by grace. This is the extraordinary grace we have been shown and now given. In the life of Jesus Christ. And so it is. We come. We come to this day. To remember not only who we are, but who Christ is in our lives. So it is. I invite you to turn. Um, hold on. Let me go to the offer first. I want you to turn to page 13. Keep your finger there. What offerings do you have? What can you give back? There's nothing we can give back. And give what we believe is our best. And that's what we can start tonight as we begin our journey to the table. Remember that as we come, we come as his children. Bless, would you come and receive our meeting more? And let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the extraordinary grace that you pour out into our lives. And we ask now that as we come to present our gifts and ties before you, that you use them in extraordinary ways and use us in extraordinary ways to tell others the good news of your life, the hope that you bring, and that is ours in the world of Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray, and let us all say. Amen.
begin with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to our Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you brought forth bread and created the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their ending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift, emptying yourself that our joy might be full. He fed the hungry. Filled the sick, ate with the scorn they had forgotten, washed the disciples' feet, and gave a whole and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us. He took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to those sitting around the table and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and those sitting at the table and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offerings for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ is died, Christ, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and all these gifts of bread and wine may can be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final retreat. And we feast in his heavenly name. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This is not Sam's table. This is not the United Methodist table. This is God's table. He is open to all people. It's because of his sacrifice that we all are given this enormous gift of grace that changes us, transforms us, not only into the likeness of Christ, but so that we can be strengthened by him in every case we face, in every trial, in every tribulation. So that we can be reminded that the very presence of Christ walks with us daily. In the Methodist Church, we don't really practice what John Wesley wanted us to do, and that was that he said to take the sacraments as often as you can, daily if possible. What if we began to do that? How would we change our world? Remembering that the presence of Christ goes with us. So tonight, you are invited to this table to take this moment to be still before God, our Creator, to find peace, to find hope, to experience the extraordinary grace as the disciples did that night. These are the gifts of God 
the people of God. Thanks be to God and let us all say. I'll invite the right the to your left and my right, I'll invite the right hand side of the church to come first and then the left hand side. precious name of Jesus be and abide with you both now and forevermore. May it strengthen you. May it give you extraordinary grace to share with the world. And may you go in his name to serve them all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
at the gazebo, please bring your own chairs, lawn chairs. If you want to be comfortable, you can stay in your cars. We will be broadcasting in the, on the radio. And then afterwards, um, bring your favorite breakfast dish, and we will break bread together in our fellowship. Now go forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Take his name with you. May he be and abide in your life both now and forevermore. And remember that we need his grace more than we need anything else in this world. So it is. May you go and share the love of Christ with all you need. All he sends your way. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us all say, Amen. Amen. Our song number 397, I Need Thee Every Hour. Please stand this, we sing together.